this question was asked in gate 2021 set 2 and it is an msq question consider the following multi-threaded code segment in a mix of c and pseudo code invoked by two processes p1 and p2 each of the processes spawns two threads t1 and t2 and they have given the code here okay so what they are asking which one of the following statements is or are correct okay so what they are given the options both p1 and p2 will print the value of x as 2 option b at least one of p1 and p2 will print the value of x as 4 option c is at least one of the threads will print the value of y as 2 option d is both t1 and t2 in both the processes will print the value of y as 1 so basically they are asking what are, what are the possible values of x and y right let's see the code now so what they have given first there are two processes right process 1 and process 2 so process 1 has two threads called as t1 t2 similarly process 2 has two threads called t1 and t2 right fine so let's see the code now they have given a global variable called as x is equal to 0 right yeah then they have given lock variable l1 so we know that if it is a global variable it is initialized to 0 we need not explicitly initialize it it is automatically initialized to 0 okay then coming to the main function so in the main function thread for foo is called right it is called as t1 then thread for t2 is again called so these two are the function calls right so first we'll execute this function call then we'll execute this function call and then there is a wait function here right okay so first so these wait functions will wait until these two threads gets completed then only it will execute it right finally so let's see what is the value of p1 for t1 for thread 1 so first time when foo is called so here y is a local variable right these two are global variables okay for thread 1 there is will be a local variable called as y which is initialized to 0 okay then l1 is a global variable acquire lock right so when you acquire a lock the value from 0 it becomes 1 okay so no other variable can access it now because it is locked now so now i am incrementing the global variable right so x becomes 1 now then i am incrementing the local variable y to 1 right okay then i release the lock right so from 1 when i release the lock it becomes 0 then i am printing y so t1's y value is what 1 right so for one time this function call is printed now we are going to again call the function foo now let's see what happens to t2 right so similarly t2 will have a local variable called as y right similarly so it will be initialized to 0 then now since the lock is free right it is 0 i can acquire the lock yes i can acquire the lock now after acquiring the lock what they are doing they are incrementing the value of x by 1 right so from 1 now it can become to 2 similarly i am incrementing the local y variable right so from 0 it becomes 1 right then i release the log again so from 1 the log again becomes to 0 so now what will be the t2's y value again it is 1 right so t1's y value is 1 t2's y value is 1 for process 1 and after printing y i'll return again here wait right so this wait function, function will wait, wait until it completes its execution so after completing its execution this wait function will get ended then i'll print the value of x now what will be the value of x x value is 2 right so x value is 2 y value is 1 for t1 and t2 right 
this is for process 1 the same procedure applies for process 2 also here because the code is same right it is going to execute the same code for process 2 also similarly the x value will be 2 right because it will execute from here from starting again from here so x value is initialized to 0 the same procedure continues here so x value will become 2 y value will be 1 for t1 and t2 right so let's see which are all options matches to our constraint so what they are saying both process p1 and p2 will print the value of x as 2 we have seen right both the process will print the value of x as 2 so option a is right so at least one of p1 and p2 will print the value of x as 4 no right both p1 and p2 will print x as 2 only not 4 so option b is not the right answer let's move on to option c at least one of the threads will print the value of y as 2 no right both the threads will print the value of y as 1 for p1 as well as for p2 also so option c is also not right so both t1 and t2 in both the processes will print the value of y as 1 yes we have seen it right what was the y value for t1 and t2 for p1 it is 1 right similarly for p2 also the t1 and t2's y value will also be 1 in the same procedure if you follow you will get the answer for y as 1 only right so option a and option d are the right answer for this question this question was asked in gate 2021 set 1 it is an msq type question so multiple options can be correct consider the following pseudocode where s is a semaphore initialized to 5 in line number 2 and counter is a shared variable initialized to 0 in line number 1. Assume that the increment operation in line number 7 is not atomic. Okay, So not atomic means we can preempt that line number 7 instruction. Okay, So here they have given if 5 threads execute the function pair up concurrently, which of the following program behaviors is or, or possible? So what options they have given? So the value of counter after all the threads executed successfully is 5. Then the value of counter is 1 after all the threads successfully completed its execution. The value of counter is 0 after all the threads successfully complete the execution. Then there is a deadlock involving all the threads. Okay, fine. So based on this code, we have to find the counter value. Fine. So let's assume that they have given five threads, right? T1, T2, T3, T4, and T5. And then they have given a counter variable, right? Called as counter. I'll name it as C. Okay. Then there is a semaphore variable, which is initialized to five. Okay. So now all the threads will concurrently execute this process. Let's say now thread one executes this process. Okay. Without first, I'm assuming that without any preemption, I'm going to execute the complete process. Okay. So weight of S1 will decrement my semaphore value to one, right? So S becomes four. Then again, weight of S. So S becomes three. Next, I increment the counter value, right? So I increment it to one. Again, I signal it, signal the semaphore. So it will increment the value to four. Again, I signal it up. Okay. So it becomes five. So after executing the thread one, my counter value will become one. Again, if thread two executes the pair up function, let's see what happens. Again, I will do weight on my semaphore value. So one is decremented again, one more weight. So one is decremented. Then I increase the counter value to one. Then I signal up the semaphore again. I signal up the semaphore. Okay. So we can see the pattern, right? So after thread one and thread two, if thread three, thread four and thread five executes, my counter value will become five, right? And by the end of it, my semaphore value also will be five. So one of the possible options is the counter value is five after all the threads complete its execution of pair up, right? So option A is the right option. 
So now let's check with option B. So option B, I am going to try it with preemption. So they have given that line seven is not atomic, right? So how can I split this one? So basically they are incrementing the counter value, right? So what I do is I split this instruction into three micro instructions like first read the counter value. Okay. Next update the counter value by one. Then write it to the counter variable, right? So this is how I'm going to split seventh instruction into three micro instructions. Okay. Now I'll preempt the process somewhere such that I'm going to check whether I'm getting the counter value as one. Okay. Similarly, I'm going to do the same procedure. There are five threads. Okay. T3, T4, T5, and they have given the counter value as zero and semaphore value as five, right? Okay. So all other operations are atomic. Only the seventh operation is not atomic. So I can preempt only in the seventh line. So let's see where I'm going to preempt it now. So first I am going to do this function, right? Weight of S. So my semaphore value will become four. Then weight of S again, my semaphore value is three. So I'm executing T1 currently now. Okay. So now I'm going to do the seventh instruction with preemption. So I'm going to read the counter value. The counter value is zero. Update the counter value. Okay. So T1's counter value is now one. Still, I have not written it. After writing it only, I'm going to update the global variable. Okay. Now T1 has updated the value, but not has written it. Okay. Next, I am preempting it. Let's say now that T2 comes in. Then again, weight of S, right? From three, it becomes two. From two, it becomes one right then again i'm going to execute the seventh instruction okay so read the counter value now t2 will read only zero not one still it t1 has not updated the counter value okay so it will read the counter value as zero t2 will read the counter value as zero and it will update the counter value by one okay let's say it has updated the value by one and next i'm not going to preempt t2 okay i have preempted t1 I have not preempted T2. Let's say I'm going to write it now. Okay. I'll write this value now. Fine. So C becomes one. Okay. Because I have written it again, it executes line eight, line nine. So what will be my semaphore value? If it executes line eight, it becomes two, right? If it executes line nine, it becomes three again. My semaphore value is three. Now T2 has completed its execution, but T1 has not completed its execution. It has preempted here still. Okay. Now I'm going to execute T3. Let's execute all the functions now. Okay. Let's assume now I'm going to execute all the functions without any preemption. Fine. So now T3 will execute Sorry. weight function. It becomes two, the sum of four value. Again, the weight function, it becomes one. Next, I'm going to increment the counter value. I'm going to execute all the three instructions. Okay. C is two. It has written it. So my counter value becomes two. Then I signal it up twice. So my semaphore value will become three after signaling it up twice. So three, three has completed its execution. Now T4 will start its execution. Let's say it has done two weight functions. So my semaphore value will become one, right? Okay. Then I'm going to increment the counter. So C becomes three now. So here counter value becomes three. Then I'm going to again signal it up twice. So my sum of four value will become three. So T4 has also completed its execution. Now T5, let's execute T5 also completely. So remember till now T1 only has not completed its execution. It has preempted and T2 has completed fully. Okay. T3 has completed fully. T4 has completed fully. Now T5 is executing it. When T5 executes it, my sum of four value will become one, right? After this weight function, both the weight function. Then again, I'm going to increment the counter value. So what is my counter value now after incrementing it? It becomes four, right? Okay. Then I'm going to again signal it up twice. So my semaphore value is three. So now after T5 completion, I'm going to resume T1's completion. So till now, what is the counter value here? See here. So it is four here, right? 
Now here I have read the counter value as one, updated it one, but I have not written it in the memory for thread T1. The counter value is one. Now I am going to write the counter value. So it is going to update from four to one. My counter value will become one, right? So now I have completed the instruction seven for thread one. Now I am going to implement line eight and line nine for thread one. So okay. my sum of four value will become five again and Finally, my counter value is what one. So is the second option also possible? The value of counter is one after all the thread executed successfully, right? So option A is also right. Option B is also right. Let's check whether option C is possible or not. Whether I can get counter value as zero. See, there are two wait functions here, right? So basically, what it says is it does not execute the counter line itself, right? If I execute this counter line, I'll increment the counter value. So without executing this line, can I complete the execution of this whole code at least once? No, right? So we have to execute at least once to complete to successfully complete the execution of the code. So option C cannot be the right option. So at least once this line should be executed, right? So here all the all the threads will be executing the line, but executing the line seven, but I'm going to override this one by thread one for the second option. But option C cannot be the right option because the least value I can get is one only not zero. I cannot get zero. Fine. So let's move on to option D. What they are saying, there is a deadlock involving all the threads. Let's check whether there is a deadlock. Okay, fine. By preemption, whether there can be a deadlock or not. So again, there are five threads t1 t2 t3 t4 t5 okay counter value is zero sum of four value is five let's assume i'm going to execute it here okay so the thread t1 executes only line five okay my sum of four value is four okay then it preempts so after line five it preempts okay after line five it preempts next t2 also after line five it preempts let's assume my sum of four value will become three Right. T three also similarly after line five it preempts my sum of four value will become two. Thread four also same after line five my sum of four value will get decremented by one again so it becomes one. So thread five also preempts after line number five my sum of four value becomes zero. Let's resume now T one. Okay. So after line five all the threads got preempted. Now I'm going to resume again T1 from line number six, whether I can see, sorry, wait. So if I decrement it, it gets blocked, right? It gets blocked here. Okay. Again, T2, it will get blocked minus two. It will become minus two again, T3 minus three, T4 minus four, T5 value minus five, right? When I execute this one, sixth instruction for all the threads, it becomes minus five and all the threads get blocked here and I cannot proceed it if I follow this method. So there is a deadlock involving all the threads. Yes. So this is the deadlock case, right? Right. So all the threads got weighted here and cannot proceed. So option D is also right. So we got option A as the right option, option B and option D as the right option and C is not the right answer.